Hello, all you music lovers out there. My name is Andy Rodriguez, and I'm also known as the Black Spinner. And welcome to my channel, where I go through my record collection, um, A through Z. We go in chronological order and in alphabetical order. I've been collecting for over 20 years, and I have quite the collection. Today's episode is twice, uh, twice as nice. We are. This episode is going to be all about the Rolling Stones. And also, I have a special guest with me, my uncle Rene, who the Rolling Stones are his favorite band. Um, yeah, why don't you say something? You know, after Led Zeppelin and stuff. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> I'm here only for commentary and, well, you know, to give my input. And, and excuse my appearance, but I have not had a haircut since before the lockdown. So I call it my Corona cut or my Corona no cut. <laughs> So it's terrible. That's why I got to keep a cap on. Hey, so why don't you take off your cap? Let's see it. Hmm? Without it? Oh, that's fine. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, without further ado, we will be going through through the Rolling Stone albums that I have on vinyl, and we are going to be going in chronological order, and we will be mentioning some key tracks that um, a lot of people might not be aware of. Maybe you can look them up. Um, through Apple Music or however you stream music. So let's get started. Their debut album, England's Newest Hitmakers. This was released in 1964 by the Rolling Stones. Look how young they look. And the songs on here, um, there's only one original song on here. The rest are going to be covers. And um, the songs on here, Not Fade Away, which was made famous by Buddy Holly, Rock 66. Um, now I've got a witness, and um, on side two, Carol by Chuck Berry, and Tell Me is the only original track by the Rolling Stones. That's a Jagger Richard um, original, and this ends with a um, cover of Walking the Dog. There you go. What I have to say about this one is, it's uh, nice to hear the Stones versions of other people's hits. Yeah, that's true because um, they they were a blues outfit, and they took a lot of blues songs that were obscured songs, and made them their own with the Rolling Stone blue twist. Yeah, um, and I, I I like the blues, and, and I like the Stones versions of the blues. So, and next we have Twelve by Five by the Rolling Stones, and here um. Here they, they start to write a little bit more. They got about two, two or three um, originals. Also, um, 2120 South Michigan Avenue is a um, instrumental. You don't hear the Stones do that many instrumentals, but they do quite. A, um, their instrumentation, they were really working on it, and when they were working on their instrumentation, they put it down on wax to, to listen to. So the songs on here are um round and round confessing the blues time on time is on my side which i always thought was a original and it's not and um good times and bad times which is a song that was written by um jagger and richards and um they also do a cover of under the boardwalk which i um enjoy by them quite a bit which wasn't a blues song but it was a um doo-wop song made famous in the mid 50s by the coasters and congratulations was a really good song that is a um, original by the two guys and um, also they do a uh, cover of Suzy Q on this one yeah and I have to I have to pay attention to good times bad times because I want to see what's the same version as uh, Led Zeppelin but it's not it is not yeah and the next I have by the Rolling Stones is out of the heads this one they start to get a little bit not poppy, but they start to move away a little bit from the blues and start to get into the into the rock that we know and love by the Stones. A little bit more um, originals on this one. On the songs on here are the last time, which of course is Jagger and Richards, and um, I'm all right. And of course, side two, track one, Satisfaction. That's the song that really broke them out. To, to, to the mainstream and became a number one hit for them and also um, this also has Play play with Fire The Spider and the Fly and One More Try is a really good song 
but um, that play 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 with fire is not a original by Jagger and Richards. I always thought it was, but it's not. But they do. But they take these covers and they pretty much make them their own. It's fantastic how they do that. And this is like, um, what is it, sixty three in? No, that's about sixty five. Okay. And satisfaction, of course, was uh, a single. And I remember my cousin had it, and I just loved that song. And it just stuck. Since I was, what, five or six when it came out? Oh, which cousin was it? <laughs> Lou. Lou. Your cousin Lou had it. That's cool. And that's um, pre pretty surprising that yeah. that um, she would have that. And that that's how you were introduced that to us. I was from our cousin Lou. Hello, cousin Lou, if you're watching this. Um, the next album we have by them, December's Children, black and white cover. After the colored ones, I believe this is the only black and white cover that they have. And the songs on here are Say Yeah, um, The Singer, Not The Song, which is a Jagger Richards um, original. And this, side two, you, you will be more familiar with these songs on this one. This has Get Off of My Cloud, I'm Free, Free to Do What I Want, Any Old Time. And Tears Go By, Gotta Get Away, which was written just by Keith Richards. And um, I'm Moving On, which was a cover. But this, they're, they're starting to branch out. They're starting to move on. And you can tell by by the change. And Brian Jones is starting to take to, to be a bigger um, presence in their music. Because Brian Jones was a, was a multi-instrumentalist. And he would play so many different instruments for the guys. And there's Route 66 again. <laughs> and after that, th this is um, this was known as the early period. And now we're going to get into... The Stones always went through periods. This is going to be the beginning of one of the classic periods of pop songs. You can say that they started to sound a little bit more like the Kinks. But they did better than the Kinks did them. They they did better Kinks than Kinks did themselves. Um, Aftermath by the Rolling Stones. This is a great album. This is one of my favorites by them of their early albums. Um, this has Painted Black, which you know, and of course Brian Jones just explodes on this track. Just explodes on it. Um, Stupid Girl is another good song. Lady Jane under my thumb. Um, Flight 505, um, It's Not Easy, I Am Waiting, and Going Home. I named quite a bit on that. Um, this is an interesting album that people don't talk that much about. Mainly people in the Rolling Stones circles or people of, people of 60s rock, British Invasion talk about this album. But you should really introduce yourself to this album. The, this one, the songs that stand out to me is Painted Black, Under My Thumb. Lady Jane. Good album. And then they moved on and they took the sound of Aftermath and they tightened it up and they tightened it up very well. Between the Buttons. That's a great... I, I love this album cover. I like the way that the picture of it is unfocused. Um, the songs on here that spend the night together which... which... <laughs> um, which, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Caused quite a stir at the time that that song yeah, came out. Yeah, they were supposed to change the lyrics for the Ed Sullivan show, and they did. Oh, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> um, today's Papers, Ruby Tuesday is also on here. Ruby oh, Tuesday is a beautiful they ballad. Did they didn't, but they were supposed to change it to Let's Spend Some Time Together. I think and, you're right about that. Yeah. And, you know, it is. I'm foggy on that, but if Mick Jagger changed it, he was like making faces at the camera. It's like, mm, really, I gotta do this. And other good songs on here Miss Amanda Jones. If you're not too familiar with Miss Amanda Jones, listen to it and you will hear the sound of, of, of late 60s, early 70s by, by the Stones. Miss Amanda Jones touches on that sound and, and it's great. I'm all sold out, my obsession, and something happened to me yesterday. Such a, such a great closer to this album. 
Yeah, you're gonna mention Ruby Tuesday. That's a uh, Rolling Stones uh, standard there. And, uh, yeah, it is. And of course, let's spend the night together. And next, I've got an alternate. Oh, it's got a comic strip in the back. Oh yeah, it does. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I gotta look closer to that. That's pretty neat. And what I have here is an alternate cover of Beggar's Banquet. Everyone's used to the toilet and the graffiti around it. Well, I guess that they had to do different different um, covers for it because it might have caused a stir on that. Um, the songs on here, of course, Sympathy for the Devil, No Expectations, Jigsaw Puzzle, Side 2, Street Fighting Man. Street Fighting Man is fantastic, especially with a lot of stuff that's going on out there right now. Street Fighting Man just exemplifies what's going on. Stray Cat Blues and Salt of the Earth with Stray Cat Blues is pure attitude. And you can already hear the attitude co coming out from the Stones music. I think one of my all-time favorite songs for the Stones is Sympathy for the Devil. Street Fighting Man is up there. And next, now, now we're getting to a different period. We're getting into the um, the, 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 the rock side, the um, very rock side, and um, we will be losing Brian Jones, unfortunately, um, to a drowning. And his replacement, was his replacement here for this album here? I don't remember, this is where, where, where Mick Taylor starts. Mick Taylor, of course, came from John Mayhall from from the from the John Mayhall band. This this like I said, this starts a great great period, one one of the best periods in rock history. Um, this right here, let it bleed. The songs on here, let it be bleed. Love and love in vain. Midnight Rambler is just a crawling, slow burning, epic end to that song. Midnight Rambler is great. And of, and of course, Mick Jagger on um, on harmonica on that song is just great. Um, Give Me Shelter, which is one of their best known songs. And Monkey Man is great. And you can't all, and this ends when you can't always get what you want. That's one of my favorite songs by the Rolling Stones. And this, this was just a great album that just started a revolution of theirs. It's just great. On um, this one, Midnight Rambler, Give Me Shelter. You can't always get what you want. Monkey Man, man. But I'll tell you what, Give Me Shelter, one of the, a band that's close to my heart, always has been, is Grand Funk Railroad. Uh, they did their version of Give Me Shelter. Yes, they did. And if you get a chance to hear that here. Monkey! Man, he yells and he screams. It's just, just great. in the band... And the band sounds on this Let It Bleed, the, the band sounds like they're going to fall off the rails. I mean, they're going in all directions. You don't know which way they're going, and that's how the next few albums are going to be. Except for this one right here, Rolling Stones in Concert. This might be one of the, um, I've read one of the greatest live concerts made, which I agree that it, it is one of the best. I enjoy this quite a bit. And when I want to hear some stones, I do throw this on. Um, this is going to be a live album of Jumping Jack Flash, um, Stray Cat Blues, um, Midnight Rambler, Psych 2 Has Sympathy for the Devil, and Honky Tonk Woman, which is a great song as well. Yeah, get, get your yayas out. This is great. And for a for a live album, and it's a single. I mean, a single vinyl, and you know, and they also have their version of Little Queenie by Chuck Berry here. Oh, that's right. That's true. And next we have this might be one of my favorite um, Rolling Stone albums. This is one of my favorites, Sticky Fingers. And yes, the zipper still works. <laughs> and um. The um, art on this album was made by the one and only Andy Warhol, which is interesting. Um, Hence the crotch shot. 
<laughs> and right there is their logo, of course, with a tongue sticking out. The song's on here. Let's get started. Brown Sugar, Sway, Wild Horses, just a great ballad. And one thing about the ballad, of course, a lot of people put ballads on their albums, but the way that Mick Jagger expresses his voice and himself on ballads, it's just bar none. Um, can't, can't You Hear Me Knocking is another song that reminds me so much of Monkey Man because of the way that the, mm -hmm. you know, the drums go and the extended instrumentation. That's just side one, ladies and gentlemen. Side two starts off with Bitch, um, Sister Morphine. And one of my favorite songs by, um, by the guys is Dead Flowers. I really enjoy Dead Flowers. It is one, it's, it's one of my favorites and I really enjoy it. Yeah, it's in a lot of compilations. Oh, it's got Bitch he didn't mention. I did mention. <laughs> no, you didn't. Yeah. Sorry. And we all know why he didn't hear the hear that. sugar. And we've got the first the um, a compilation that I have. Um, like we were talking before the show, uh, my uncle and I, my uncle and I were talking about the Rolling Stones have a lot of compilations, and you got to be careful of their compilations because a lot of their comp uh, compilations repeat themselves quite a bit. So uh, you got to be careful of what you get. But you can't always get what you want, right? <laughs> but um, this was the first um, album that I got by, by the Rolling Stones, and it got me really into them. I bought this one years ago. This is called Hot Rock 64 to 71, and that's exactly what it is. It's a double album. There's the inside of it. But um, it is a double album, and it's got everything that you want from that period. Uh, Brown Sugar, Wild Horses, Gimme Shelter, Honky Talk Woman, Satisfaction, Painted Black, Jumping Jack Flash, Street Fighting Man. I could go on and on and on. But if you're a Stones fan, you know exactly what's on here. And they will come out with a second album that I don't have called More Hot Rocks that they dove a little bit more into the album tracks. But if you want a greatest hits between 64 and 71, this one is highly, highly recommended, and it will be the only one you need. My first Rolling Stones uh, was a compilation, but I got it when I was stationed in Germany, and it's uh, called Rolled Gold, and it's kind of like Europe would come up with their own versions of, um, you know, greatest hits and that kind of stuff, and it was called Rolled Gold, and it was 1963 to 1969. Hmm. So it pretty much ends like with... Uh, Sympathy for the devil and that kind of stuff. But it definitely good album. And this album here, their next one, a lot of people say that this is their best. And sometimes it is to me and sometimes it's not because I always go back to Sticky Fingers and an album that I'm going to talk about later on. But I'm talking about Exile on Main Street. This is a double album from 1971. Or 72. This and this might be 72. There's the inside of it. And the songs on here. Um, here's the paper inserts. And this starts off with a bang. I mean, with a quick bang. Rocks off. Rip this joint. Hip shakes really good. Casino Boogie is a, is a fantastic song with a great guitar. A solo, and you can really hear and feel Mick Taylor on this one. You can really feel it, and um, he really gets to stretch out. Um, Tumbling Dice, of course, is one of their most beloved songs. Um, Sweet Virginia, Torn and Frayed, um, and Black Angel, and Loving Cup. Yes, I read everything on the first album, and I really enjoyed it. You want to talk about the first one? Well, I want to talk about it this album because yeah. about that time the stones were fed up with the way england was taxing the hell out of them like 90 percent of their income so they they went to france and they took a i think what's it called the, the stones mobile unit yeah mm -hmm. and i think that's why it's called exile on men street because they felt like exiles in their own homeland so let's <laughs> come 
that's my understanding as to why uh, this album came about. And that and that that's exactly right. They 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 had taken the mobile with them and they had held themselves up at a chateau, I believe is what they call it. Mm-hmm. And they just they just played. Mm-hmm. And that's why this album is um, came out the way that it did. And on side two, um, the lead vocal on the second album, Happy, is by Keith Richards. I didn't I didn't know that until recently, but Happy is a great song. I really enjoy it. Um, Ventilator Blues, Let It Loose, um, All Down the Line, Shine a Light, and Soul Survivor. These are all great songs on here. And it is a double album. But it doesn't feel that way. It's like when you finish hearing the whole thing, you're like, wow, it's already been an hour and 15 minutes have gone by. And what I have um, here is a compilation. Remember, I said to be careful with the compilation. But uh, these compilations, um, not that many were um, repeated. This one's Made in the Shade by the Rolling Stones. The songs on here that are different from the other compilation is Dance the Little Sister, Happy, um, Angie's on here, and it's only rock and roll, and and do-do-do-do, Heartbreaker. Love that song, Heartbreaker. Again, I put it in the class of, of Monkey. and um, I know you've heard that song. And it starts about a, a kid getting shot in New York City. Yeah. Heartbreaker. Took the 44 to the heart. And you know you've heard those lyrics. Yeah. The police in New York City. And then Rolling Stones, Black and Blue. And we were talking about this before this started. If you're going to listen to the Stones, this might be one that you might want to start with. Because there is no other Rolling Stone album that sounds like this. Uh, Mick Taylor was on his way out. And Ronnie Wood, who's there still today, was on his way in. So they took a lot of these songs, and a lot of them are just jam songs. You know, they're trying to feel out Ronnie Wood. They, they, they put it on wax, and they, they, they release it. And there's the inside of it. And also, what's great about this, this comes in a blue vinyl. And here is the paper fold for it. And the songs on here, that there's not going to be that many songs that people are going to be familiar on this one. I think the most familiar song on here is going to be Memory Motel, which goes about goes about three, about three minutes too long for me. It's a seven-minute song, and it's just repetitive. But um, Hot Stuff, Hand of Fate. Hot Stuff. Yeah. Can't get new. And it kind of sounds like a disco song, you know, mm-hmm. because it repeats itself while quite a bit hot stuff. But, man, they just keep that, that music chugging along on that one. And um, Fool to Cry and Crazy Mama is a great yeah, track on there. we got to repeat. Hey, but, Negrita, Fool to Cry. Oh, my God. Hot Stuff, Hand of Fate, Sherry Old Baby, which is kind of like a, what's the, kind of like reggae. Yes, exactly. And, 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 but you know, if and I agree, if you're not a Stones fan, I would start with this. One. It's totally and build, different. Build on that. Mm-hmm. Black and blue. Just remember that. Black and blue. Black but, and blue. But also, it does have one of their worst songs ever, which is "Melody." That's a bad, bad song. And even though one of my dear friends is named Melody, but still, it's a bad song. No coincidence, no coincidence whatsoever. And what we have next is one of my favorite songs. I'm sorry, one of my favorite albums, Some Girls. This is fantastic. This was released in 78 in the middle of punk, in the middle of disco. The Stones come out with an album, and it's fantastic from beginning to end. There's, there's the back of it. And any album that has... Um, Shattered and Beast of Burden as the last two tracks on side two. That's how they ended. It was with Shattered and Beast of Burden. It's just, it, it took a lot of guts to do that. But let's go to the tracks on, on here. There's the um, uh, inside of it. But let's go on through the tracks. 
Um, it starts with Miss You, one, uh, one of their best singles of all time. I love the the the, the um the, the, the title track, Some Girls, Lies, When the Whip Comes Down, Far, and the song Far Away Eyes. To me, it's, oh, well, it's, it's like it's a country, country song. song. <laughs> it's a country song. <laughs> and the tale that they tell is pretty funny. I'm respectable, and before they make me run. I wearing overalls and a, and a hat with a, <laughs> a straw in his mouth. <laughs> yeah. But that was great. Um, did you want to add anything about this album? I kind of want to let you go through. This, this is my era. The Rolling Stones go through eras, and... Really, like right there. This one I did have on cassette, uh, okay. right here. Yep. So it starts with some girls, and of course, uh, emotional rescue, tattoo you. Uh, those are the ones. My go. That's the stones that got a lot of airplay in my stereo. Emotional rescue. Fantastic album. Um, I just heard it recently. The first time I heard it, I, I didn't like it that much. Because there's a lot of reggae tones to this album. And yeah, it, it's an album that I really have to get used to. It, it was released in the middle of the disco age. And, you know, a lot of people were, weren't were weren't paying attention to the Stones anymore. And that's a shame. But the songs on here, Dance Part 1, is just a killer song. Um, Summer Romance, Send It To Me, Let Me Go, and a great ballad, Indian Girl. Um, where, where, the bo where the boys go, Emotional Rescue. I can hear that uh, at Club 54 and, and, see, and see Mick with Bianca and this song going on. Mm -hmm. it, it's great. And um, also, She's So Cold. It's a great song. I like it. I don't care what people say. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I love it. And this is another period of the Stones where they're completely different from the mid-60s and the early 70s and the mid-70s. Now we're getting late 70s, early 80s. And there's always a turn at every corner when it comes to Rolling Stones. That's why they have to be um, respected for their music. Tattoo You by the Rolling Stones. This was in 81, I believe. Yeah, was somewhere it? around there. Was it 81? Yeah, it, yeah, it was 81. Start Me Up, Hang Fire, Slave is just just a great song by them. It's totally different from anything you would um, hear from them. Um, I really like Neighbors, and Black Limousine, and Little TNA is also a good song. But that's the problem with Tattoo You. Side One is fantastic. Side two starts to slow down a bit, but um, I do like "Waiting on a Friend." Waiting yeah, on a Friend a on is a really good song, and they do make MTV a video. video yeah, there's an MTV video for that one where they shoot it in the streets of, um, I believe it's New York City. I'm not too sure what borough. Anything you want to add on that? Yeah, it's great. <laughs> I, like I said, this isn't one of the albums that gets a lot of airplay for me. And this is a, a live album called Still Life. This was to accompany the I um, know they, tour. they were touring in 1981 because I was stationed in El Paso and I had a Houston connection already. I even contemplated coming to the concert at the Astrodome. I don't know why. I, I just had a while here and said, man, I can, maybe I had to go see the Stone. And that's 1981. I finally got to see him in 1989. Still Wheels. Still Wheels tour. And I saw them in 2000, I believe it was in 2000, 2001, with my, um, with my cousin um, Carlos and my cousin Jose. Um, there's the inside of it. It's just a single album. I was hoping for a double, because we all know how much I love that double live album out there. Um, this has Time is on My Side and a cover of Just My Imagination, which is just okay. But this just has start me up and I can't get no satisfaction. And I can't get no satisfaction. They do stretch it out to almost four, four and a half minutes. So so you can already hear what's going on. Under my thumb, let's spend the night together and shattered and going to a go-go, which was a cover song. But yeah, this was a good, good, good album. It's panned by critics. 
but I don't care. I don't listen to critics. I listen to my heart and I listen to my mind. How much I like it. Don't listen to the critics. I mean, we like to go to all music. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of times, all music will give an album two stars. And it's like a four. It's like our favorites. <laughs> and also, speaking of, you know, a lot of people trash dirty work. But this is a good hard rock album. And, you know, I, I, I bought it because I wanted to be part of my collection. I bought it years ago. And I would read what, what people would write about this. So I, I wouldn't turn it on. Until maybe a few years ago, I threw it on. And I was like, man, I got to stop listening to these people. They had the Harlem Shuffle. Yeah, yeah. The, this has Harlem Shuffle. Let's go through it real quick. Here's the inside of it. With lyrics. Um, this does have the Harlem Shuffle, as we mentioned, but also this has one one hit to the body. For and some reason, that song stands out to me. Yeah, yeah, that was also a um, single that they had released off this um, fight. This is also a good song, Hold Back, and the flip side, Winning Ugly and Dirty Work. You know, at this time, there was a lot of um, turmoil inside the Rolling Stones camp. With Matt, with Hagger, with Hagger, with Jagger and Richards going at it, they weren't getting along very well. And um, you know, Jagger had released a solo album that was very unlike any kind of Stones album. And you know, Richards didn't like that. And I do, I do have a couple of compilations to close this out. These were given to me years ago by my cousin Jose. Um, these are imports. I'd never seen these before, and they're probably like a couple of imports that you had gotten from from Germany. Mm -hmm. And I'm not too sure where these came from. Um, this one was released in '77, and it's a double. And I was like, "Really? You want to give me these?" This lucky dog, Jose, gave was... him all kinds of albums. And I'm like, <laughs> I, hey, I think like... that's what got it started. How many albums did Jose give you? About a hundred? About five. <laughs> Five hundred? <laughs> no, no, about five. Well, he gave you good ones. I'm yeah. Sure. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He gave me a handful of quality stuff. He gave you a Jimmy, didn't he? No. Well, shit, I get it. <laughs> I like the Jimmy. I got the recorded one. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, he still has his albums. He, he didn't does? give me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't give me all of them. I haven't seen him in years. So. Yeah, he's doing good. Um. This has um. This says greatest hits, but they're not really greatest hits. They're they're album tracks, and and the album tracks are pretty good. Even though this does have satisfaction, but it does have it's all over now. Good times, bad times. The time is on my side. Heart of stone, and this is the last time. This is the last time. This says get off my cloud. I'm free. Nineteenth nervous breakdown. And uh, Mother's Little Helper. This has really good songs on there. That um, that listen this compilation this, is listen, different. Listen to this side: Jumping Jack, Flash, Street Fighting Man, Honking Tonk Woman. You can't always get what you want. Wild Horses, Brown Sugar. Damn. Yeah. And if you're um, familiar with imports, the sound is a little bit more crisper as well. And another greatest hits gave to me by my cousin Jose was this one. And the songs on here, the, the ones that stand out, because they're not that much, they're, they're not the songs that you're going to find on greatest hits. But Everybody Needs Somebody, um, Backstreet Girl, Carol, Poison Ivy, Dear Doctor. This is just great compilations that my cousin Jose gave me. Because I had never seen these anywhere else. So I've never been been able to find them or had the chance to buy them. So I really thank them for these compilations. Well, that's all your stones? Yeah. That, that, <laughs> that is all for the Rolling Stones. That is my Rolling Stone collection. Thank you so much for joining me. And my hey. special guest. My yeah, thanks for having me over. Well, 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 thanks for coming finally, an hour and a half late, but hey, he's here. <laughs>
I got a lot of catching up to do. I follow this guy, but I'm on like letter D. I know. <laughs> I know. I'm always waiting for comments from uh, from him, and, and he texts me that he's on letter C, and then I'm already doing P. I'm like, really? So um, thanks a lot for joining me on this um, great, great um, journey that I'm going through, going through all my records. I'm really having a good time going through these records and sharing them with y'all. So um, I really hope that you'll join me on my next episode where I'll be going through the R's. And it looks like I might have to split that into two because the R's and the S's and the T's are going to be uh, quite a road to go through. And I really hope that y'all join me with that because I've, I've already started going through them and it's going to be fun, I tell you that. Well, thanks a lot for joining me. I like to say before we go. Of course. Is the stone go through eras. And the my era is late 70s, early 80s. So if you're somebody my age, give that a chance. And I think you'll enjoy that. And then go from there. We can start going back towards the 60s or up to the 80s, 90s, 2000s. Yep. And, and um, I've always liked the blues. And I've always liked the blues and the their version of the blues. So. It's kind of like, I think they make you want to hear the blues. Yeah, yeah, they do, because they really put their own twist on things. And um, I don't stop here. You know, I've got their other stuff on cassette and some CD when they kept on going into the into the 80s and, and into the 90s. So my journey of Rolling Stones do not stop here. So um, they are one of my favorite bands, um, and I really do enjoy them. Hey, but don't forget to subscribe to our, subscribe to my channel and don't don't forget to leave a comment and please join me for my next episode. I used to number these, but I'm already I don't even know what number I'm on anymore. Um, but um, why don't you guys take care of yourselves out there and keep rocking? And I'll see y'all next time. Take care, guys. You want to say goodbye? Oh, I did find out that you could put black spinner and then put like the letter. Like remember I said it was on letter D. You can put the letter, mm -hmm. and then it's going to go to that episode. Really? Yeah. Huh. Interesting. I didn't know that about, I didn't even know that about, about yeah, my own channel. You know, I had so many that I, <laughs> I'm, uh, I haven't seen, but I did say, well, shoot, I know the last time he was on letter C, or he had just done the Beatles, so let me try C. And then you have two versions, two parts of it. C, yeah. don't you? Yeah. So, yeah. C, yeah. Had, C had to take two episodes to get yeah. through. No, yeah. in fact, three. Because I did Eric Clapton by himself. Oh, really? Because Clapton had his own episode. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, oh, um. Bye now. <laughs> thanks, guys. I will see I will see y'all next time. Any final thoughts? <laughs> I keep on interrupting. No, that's it. Oh, yeah. Happy Juneteenth, everybody. Bye. Bye, guys. Thanks a lot. <laughs>